Hey, I shouldn't be telling you this, but if you skip this part of the video, you will miss out on the deal of a lifetime. If you click the link in the description, you will see that Atlas VPN are giving out an offer to get a three year subscription for just $1.83 per month. That's less than Netflix's latest price increase. Plus, it comes with three months for free and a 30 day money back guarantee. It's the best VPN on the market and you can use it to watch shows that are not available on streaming services in your country. So you can watch Friends on UK Netflix no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have a subscription to Netflix. You can even use it on unlimited devices. So everyone in your house can watch Friends on UK Netflix at once. And they keep your searches private so that we'll all finally stop spying on you. But remember, time is of the essence if you want to get this offer. Just $1.83 per month to get a three year subscription by clicking the link in the description below. Am I the asshole for not letting my husband sit with us during girls night in? My husband, 35, is disabled. He's in a wheelchair and is home 24-7. Because he needs me around to assist him, I'd have him in his chair nearby while I do laundry or cook or clean. He's with me most of the time except for when I go to the bathroom, but even then he'd complain about me being away for so long. I don't even go shopping. Everything gets delivered to our home. I haven't seen my girlfriends for a while and have arranged to start having girl night ins at my place since I can't be away from home, especially at night. I asked my husband for some PTUVACY when my friends come and he took it badly, took it as in I was annoyed and bothered by him but I assured him it wasn't like that. He said if it's true then I'd let him sit with us during girls night in. I absolutely refused and tried explaining that my friends and I need privacy and this is the only time we spend together. I also explained that having him sit with us would ruin the purpose of girls night in. He threw a hissy fit and called me selfish and rude for refusing. He started giving me the cold shoulder saying until I agree to include him, he will not be speaking to me. Am I the asshole for choosing, this hill, to die on according to him? More context carrot I haven't gone out in a while, haven't seen my friends or even family in a while because he wouldn't go with me and also refuses to stay home with someone else to look after him. He even wouldn't let me be out of sight for more than few minutes. I sometimes have to bring him near the bathroom so he cooped wait for me with the door open if I'm taking more time. He isn't sociable by nature, so he doesn't have friends. The Anki two friends he had showed their true color after he became disabled and put a distance. About the girls night in issue. He said he would not let my friends in if I continue to exclude him which caused a major argument between us. Not the asshole he's using his disability to guilt trip you into having no friends or time for yourself. It is unbelievably creepy and wrong he complains about you having bathroom breaks. He is toxic and controlling. He is isolating and punishing you. Let him know you will be setting boundaries if this behavior continues. Either he seeks therapy to deal with his new reality or he risks losing you. He doesn't need you 24-7. I would go further and say the girls' night in will be a girls' night out. Not the asshole but he is. Not the asshole. This is abuse. You would be well within your rights to leave this relationship the bathroom thing alone is completely abnormal. He won't let you do things. It's not up to him. Am I the asshole for choosing my budget over my boyfriend this Halloween? I need some perspective here, this whole thing is so out of control. I, 28, F. Own my house and my boyfriend, 29 per meter, moved in January. We had a ton of early money arguments and agreed that we would keep to a household budget. Also, he agreed to pay down his credit card debt. I have more flexibility in my personal spending than he does. Early after we moved in. My boyfriend told me that as a kid he always wanted to live in one of the houses that were totally decorated for trick or treat and handed out full-size candy. Here's where I messed up. I took this as a comment and not a plan. When the end of September came, we went to the Halloween store, and he was under the impression we had savings for this. I didn't know. We go over the monthly budget together, and it was never listed. When he found out that there was no Halloween savings, we had an argument. Afterwards I talked to friends who all said he had talked about trick or treat extensively and how much it meant. I chalked this one up to a misunderstanding on my part. So I came up with $500 my money, and went to him with an apology. He decided to buy one big piece, an animatronic clown and some lights. It burned through the $500, plus he put a little on his own credit card. He wanted another big piece and was mad I wouldn't put it on my credit card. 
I asked if he wanted to put up handmade decorations or spider webs but he said it would look cheap. A few weeks later, we had a fight over candy. He was still stuck on buying full-size bars. We easily get over 250 trick or treaters and I said we just don't have that much money. So we got the bulk bags of good small bars. I also had these little coloring books for the allergy and diabetes kids. Jump forward to Halloween. Early kids show up and he is letting them grab handfuls. I remind him we have a ton of trick or treaters coming, and he got really annoyed. I had ordered a pizza for us. So I get it and go inside for about 10 minutes. By the time I came back out, the trick or treat bowls were empty. He had been dumping a third of a bowl in each kid's bag and had given out all the coloring books to whatever kids came along. He told me that I'd have to go run out and buy more candy on my credit card. I said I wasn't going to do that, and it wasn't my fault he just handed out 20 pounds of candy. He started yelling right there in front of the kids, and I told him to come inside. He responded that he wasn't stopping trick or treating even if there was no candy. I told him to have fun with the clown, and went inside. He came in 15 minutes later. Then he demanded that I leave for the night so that he could clear his head. He argued it was fair because I had already eaten and it was my fault that trick or treat was ruined because I'm cheap. I handed the rest of the pizza at him and refused. He left and went to a friend's house and I guess they spent the rest of the night drinking, handing out trick or treat candy and texting me how awful and cheap I am. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. It sounds like he isn't able to financially support himself. You already support him financially. You do more in the sense of organization, responsibility, planning. He full expects you to realize his dreams without having to lift a finger. Please tell me this guy at least does half the chores? He was under the impression we had savings for this. No, he wasn't because he didn't contribute to any savings for this. He was under the impression you were going to cave and pay for it. Not the asshole and you need to run from this man. Making fun of how cheap you are when he is living in your house that you own? Absolutely not. Tell him he can GTFO. Who is he to tell you to leave your own home? I'm livid for you girl. You need a man not this child. Am I the asshole for not forcing my parents to invite my fiancé to their upcoming Christmas party? Christmas in my 28 male family is a big deal. My parents' holiday parties are pretty extravagant and beyond family. Only a select few get invites. This includes close friends and neighbors. My siblings and I can make suggestions but it's our parents' party at the end of the day, which means their decisions are final. My parents also happen to be notoriously hard to impress. A few of my friends have made the invite list for the party before, but slowly as I've gotten older and lost touch with people, that list has dwindled down to just my longtime best friend and former roommate, Jordan, 32 male. We grew up in the same neighborhood and he even worked at my dad's company for the majority of his 20s. While he's my friend first and foremost, he's clearly also a friend of the family. My parents love him and have since we met when I was 15 and he was 19. I got engaged in September after dating my fiancé, 29 female, for around a year and a half. She wasn't put on the guest list last year and she didn't see it as a problem since she was busy with her own family festivities. I hadn't really put much thought into what might happen this year besides a brief mention to my parents about adding her sometime last month. As always, my parents email my siblings and I the final guest list on November 1st in order for us to look over it and give our thoughts as they finalize final numbers in preparation to send out invitations and RSVPs. As I looked over it this morning, I noticed my fiancé's name wasn't on there. An important note is that the party isn't the only Christmas celebration had. I also stay with my family on Christmas night in order to open presents the next morning, and all significant others are invited to that. I told this to my fiancé and she was livid. She said it was beyond disrespectful that Jordan got an invite but she didn't, and that I needed to stand up to my parents. I told her it was their party, and they had the final say but that Christmas festivities would still happen this just gave her time with her own family again. Am I the asshole? ETA. After texting them for a reason she was left out. My mom told me that multiple people had expressed distaste for her in the past and that she was trying to minimize the amount of negativity, drama as much as she could. If I had to guess, I know who these people are my sister and Jordan who have both had slightly unpleasant interactions with my fiancé in the past where she claimed they were both stuck up. I now feel even more caught in the middle. You are the asshole your parents have a right to invite whomever they want, but they are choosing to be incredibly disrespectful to your fiancé. 
If they don't think your future wife warrants an invite, you should not go. FYI, notoriously hard to impress, is a euphemism for, assholes. Edit till the difference between fiancé and fiancé. You are the asshole. You really don't see the problem here? If you don't want to fight your parents on their guest list, then you better not be going, either. This is the woman you supposedly want to spend the rest of your life with. The time for split holidays is over, unless you both agree otherwise. Also, this party sounds pretentious as hell. You are the asshole. Your fiancé doesn't make the cut? Wow. Time to decide who is your family going forward. The person you plan to spend the rest of your life with, or mommy and daddy. Am I the asshole for telling everyone it's not Andy's birthday? My husband has a friend Andy who can't hold down a job and there's always something wrong where he can't afford his rent. Andy is always asking for money or a loan he doesn't pay back. My husband gives in and gives it to him. I'm talking thousands of dollars over the last few years my husband has loaned him. A few months ago I told my husband next time he gives Andy money I'm gone. My husband was doing good until Andy shows up at our door last night and tells my husband everyone forget his birthday. So they go out to drinks. I do some snooping on Facebook and Andy's birthday isn't until next month and I screenshot a picture of my husband last year with him on Andy's real birthday in front of a Christmas tree. I go to the bar and show everyone that it's not Andy's birthday and the room is dead silent. Andy said he put the wrong birthday on his Facebook account so I show him the picture of him last year with the date posted of his real birthday. Andy said that was a mistake and everyone thinks December date is right because it's on his Facebook. I asked Andy to show everyone his driver's license and he said he forgot it. I asked the bartender if Andy could legally drink without proof of age and the bartender said no. Andy left refused to show his license and left. My husband said I was being a BTCH for no reason but I reminded him that it's the first day of the month and Andy always comes around looking for extra money. We had an argument about Andy and once again. My husband stayed with a friend and I'm packing up my things because he acts like I'm the asshole for coming to the bar and saying publicly what I did. Edited for context and paragraphs. Is your husband building an art room? Not the asshole file for divorce and let you husband and Andy live happily ever after. You deserve better. Not the asshole. Assuming this story is true, Andy is a leech. Your husband has on rose-colored glasses. Someone getting in trouble either through an actual consequence or just sheer embarrassment because of something they actively choose to do, is not your fault. That's like saying I stole something from Best Buy, my friend reported me and I got arrested and then blamed my friend for, ruining my life. My friend didn't ruin my life, I did. Andy is embarrassed for being called out on because he got away with so much for so long. Your husband is embarrassed because that's his friend. Op. Stand your ground. Money troubles await if your husband doesn't see the significance of giving out money to people without a second thought who clearly won't pay a cent back.